All right, tubers. Good Sunday evening. Matt M. Roy back once again. Ooh, I was naughty, naughty today. I decided to play hooky from church. So I have plenty of energy tonight. And since I'm sure everybody is probably at home searching YouTube for something interesting to watch, I thought I'd go ahead and give you guys a live stream. And yes, I do know quite a few of you have expressed interest in me going back to the normal YouTube video, uploaded video format. But for now, uh, with my life being as hectic as it is, the live streaming is just much simpler and takes a lot less time to put together. So what I have for you guys tonight is a little bit of a treat, something different than I usually put out here. I'll say a few shout outs to, to the people that are here. Cameron Cloud is here, says, hey, Matt, how's your day? I'm doing just fine. Uh, wait for a few more people to come. Uh, basically, what I'm going to be doing on this video is showing you guys um, how to test and do some basic maintenance on um, stereo components that you may get. Uh, now, we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, what you see in front of you here are three items, actually four items, that I picked up at uh, various garage sales and thrift stores over the past couple of weeks. Um, go ahead and start with this one down here, because this is actually the first item I picked up. This is a Sony... Uh, five disc changer. This is model number CDP C345. This dates from the early to mid 90s, though I'm thinking probably more towards the mid 90s. That's because it has the exchange system. Now, the really cool thing about Sony's exchange system is you can actually be playing a disc and it Right now I have a disc in um, slot two because this is a five disc changer. And while you're playing that disc, you can push this exchange button and you can actually go ahead and fill the rest of the slots with discs. And the reason this works is this works similar to a um, an old style jukebox. It actually takes the discs, the disc, I should say, one at a time, lifts it up onto a pedestal and that's where it spins in place so that frees the rest of the tray that to allow you to actually fill it up with your selection of music so you could have one country music disc in there one classical maybe one rock and roll or something like that uh next up here is the next thing i got this is a sony uh receiver this is model number strde995 um, this is actually a very interesting receiver. This is something I picked up locally at the uh, CHKD here, the one closest to my house. Um, I wound up getting this on sale day, so it was marked $17, so I want to say I paid like $13 or $14 for this. This is actually a really, really nice receiver for a couple of reasons. One, it's a Sony. Uh, two, it's actually their mid to higher range uh, receiver. And three, if you look on here, it actually has a phono input, which is very rare for uh, modern receivers. Most of them did away with this. So if you were to try to hook up a um, turntable, you would actually have to hook up a preamp in between. So this case, with this particular one, that means there's actually a, a preamp built in, and even more important that there's a ground on the back that you can connect your ground wire to. So this is actually 100% uh, ready to receive your um, phonograph. Another thing that's nice about this, this is actually a seven channel amplifier, which means you can actually hook up seven speakers to this. So this is an every essence a true score because this is a true seven channel surround sound receiver um another nice bonus if you do find these in the thrift stores and this goes for me too generally you do not find the remote controls but in my case i actually did get the original remote control which was taped to the top of it which is not the greatest way to do it because they tend to use um, not masking tape, what's the other one? Scotch tape. So I usually have to uh, get some goo gone to clean it off. And this one, 
you can see still has some residue left on there. I didn't get a chance to get that off yet. Um, but what I like about this particular mode is you see this little jog wheel here. This allows you to choose bet uh, between all the functions or toggle between the functions. You can see you got CD, satellite, tuner, phono, multi, um, M1, M2, which is, I guess, like an auxiliary. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and switch it to the uh, CD setting. If I can get it up there. Uh, did I miss it? Hang on. Where was it? There it is, CD. And the cool thing is this particular changer did not actually come with this. These are not even really from the same era. This probably being from the early to mid-2000s, this being from the early to mid-1990s. But as you can see, the remote works perfectly fine with this CD player. So that was a plus. I was actually able to go ahead and find a couple of components that match. Now, the third component up here is a Sony, uh, Sony, sorry, JVC dual cassette deck that I bought from the uh, garage sale this past weekend. Uh, this works just fine. This is model number TD-W354. And if you saw my live stream I did the other day from uh, downstairs, this was part of that. Um, it works just fine. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys hear the uh, the CD player real quick. I'm not going to play a lot because I don't want to get a copyright strike, but we'll go ahead and uh, change the input here. Turn that down first. There we go. Okay, and that's about as much as I'm comfortable um, playing any kind of music on YouTube. Now, the one thing I haven't shown you guys yet are these speakers. And believe it or not, I actually just picked these speakers up this morning um, from a garage sale that they had listed on the Facebook Marketplace. Um, I actually picked these up. These are Sirwin Vega RE Series speakers. Now... I have never heard of Sirwin Vega. I talked to a friend of mine um, about two, three hours ago, and he told me that these were decent um, speakers back in the day. He told me he actually heard of this, and he said these were like um, consumer home theater grade speakers. I don't know if I believe that. I never have heard of these before, but if you guys have, you can go ahead and uh, put a comment down there. Go ahead and take the grill off. If I can get my finger in there, um, you can see these are two way speakers. Uh, the reason I say that is normally you would find a mid range there. Um, but as you can see, that's just a hole for the uh, for the base. You got a little tweeter here. It looks like a Pico tweeter. Not 100 percent sure on that. And then you have the woofer here. Uh, the membranes are in excellent shape, to be honest with you. I'm very, very surprised. A little dusty. A little bit of a tip for you guys. If you get speakers in and they're a little dusty like this, it's better to just use something like a uh, dry cloth. And I'll show you what I tend to use. Yeah, I saw that comment, crank the volume. I'm going to do that in a minute. I get these. This I actually picked up from uh, Lidl a few days ago. And these are great dusters, and you want to just very, very carefully dust around the speaker. You don't want to use any solvents or any type of water, because that can actually damage the very brittle, most of the time, membrane that's around the uh, speaker. And if that goes, then the speaker's just not going to sound right. You're going to have that kind of cracking and popping sound. So just a light... Um, duster around the speaker works just fine. And to be perfectly honest for you, if you clean, little secret, if you clean the grills really well, when you put the, put the grill back on, nobody's going to notice the difference. So you could probably just leave that alone anyway. Jeff says, your friend was absolutely correct. Back in the day, the they were the speakers to have. I'm very surprised you never heard of them. 
you know what? I've heard of most types of home theater speakers, but these particular ones I am uh, i wasn't really familiar with. I'm going to go ahead. Somebody asked me to crank them up. I am definitely going to go ahead and uh, do that real quick for you guys. So you may want to turn your volume down a little bit, especially if you're listening to me on a laptop. So let's go ahead and bring you guys to my favorite song on here. And I'm going to play a few seconds of it. You ready? Here we go. Okay. Well, as you guys can see, the uh, membranes didn't move too much on this, but these speakers do have quite a bit of bass to them. I promise you that. Stephen Barber says, Sony makes everything sound good. Come on, it's Sony. I have to agree. I am a very big uh, Sony fanboy. I think they make very good quality products. Very few Sony stereo components um, have I ever had issues with. Um, but yeah, Sony does a great job. So now that there's some more people there, I'm going to get back to, uh, what the meat and potatoes of this video is really about. Um, when you first get, uh, systems in like this, you want to go ahead and clean them as best you can. Generally, I will use something like, um, a Clorox wipe and just wipe around the, um, metal parts and even on the plastic parts are fine now we call them clorox wipes but they do not actually have bleach on them they're actually alcohol based i'm gonna go ahead and turn you guys on me for a minute and show you what i'm talking about mom's in here watching a movie doing a live stream You guys know I don't really prepare a lot for these things. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so this is what I use. This just happens to be Food Line brand. They are fresh scent disinfecting wipes. Now these actually have, um, let me see, this uses octal decal ammonium chloride. So these do have a little bit of chloride in them but they don't actually have bleach bleach. So they're not going to bleach anything out. So these are perfectly fine to use on things like a, um, like a stereo. Now I would be very careful in using these on something maybe that's porous, like a bedspread or something like that. But for the, this purpose, it works just fine. Let me flip you guys around. So again, the very first thing that I do going to go ahead and turn it off because I don't want to have any power there. Normally I'll unplug it, but for the purpose of this video, I don't think I really need to do that. You can see you got a little bit of dirt here, probably from all the years of people turning it on and off. I'm going to go ahead and just very, very lightly rub that section. And as you can see, the dirt is pretty much gone. Now, for the stuff that's ground in, you can use something like a, um old toothbrush or maybe one of those little brushes you can get from the dollar store. Um, but this looks pretty good to me. And the nice thing about having um, wipes that are mostly alcohol-based, you see how fast uh, that's drying? And that's about it. Now, for the actual dust that builds up, you could just use something like that little duster I was showing you about, telling you about, I should say. And you can see that looks perfectly clean. Now, this is going to be a little bit trickier. Uh, this is obviously uh, a sticker that had been on there at one time. Um, this was probably taken off by the previous owner, but not in time to remove all the glue. You could see the glue had started to break down by that point. You can actually see that I can pull some of it off with my finger. Now, one thing you can try um, is to use something like the Clorox wipe, and I call them Clorox wipes, but they're mainly disinfecting wipes, and try to put a little bit of elbow grease in there with your thumb. I like to use my thumb and just kind of work it in a little bit and see if it comes off. 
Now, I will tell you from experience, nine times out of ten, this is not going to be enough to take that sticker residue off. But we'll see. I'm going to work it in there just a little bit. And we'll go ahead and grab the uh, duster because I want to put a little bit of dust back on there to see how much of that sticker residue is left. Well, what do you know, guys? This is that one time out of 10 that it actually took it off. And I'm, a, I'm actually disappointed that it did because I wanted to show you guys my next trick, which is using Goo Gone. Um, but in this case, I was lucky. I didn't actually need to do that. So what I'll do is I'll go all around it. I'll look and see if there's any other um, residue. Like you could see on the, on the volume rocker here, there's some dirt there. I'm going to go ahead and just take the uh, Clorox wipe there and work that in a little bit. And again, the nice thing about these wipes is they... Being they're mostly alcohol, they'll just evaporate pretty much. You don't even really need to wipe them off after that. So, moving on, the next thing you want to do is basically just test everything. So, I'll go ahead and turn this back on. I'm going to turn it down because, as somebody pointed out, I don't want to get a copyright strike. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, we'll go ahead and go to the CD, the, the CD player. And I want to try to test all the functionality. And I've pretty much done that already. Um, you don't really need to worry too much about the special functions like the shuffle, the program, the continue. Generally, all that stuff will work properly as long as it plays. Now, the one thing I do like to do, especially when the, um, the disc changers get this age, I want to make sure that the doors open and close properly. And I'll do this a few times. I'll go and just open and close it open and close it make sure i don't hear any grinding or binding noises Whoop. this actually sounds very healthy and then i'll hit the uh, disc skip button and make sure that the tray moves freely nothing's binding in there again it's it moves just fine and then, of course, the last test is to actually play a disc. So if you look on here, you can see that it marks what each slot is. So that's disc one. And this particular album, the Chipmunks disc, is in disc two. So I'll go ahead and play disc two. Go ahead and push disc two. And before you ask, no, you do not need to test each particular slot. Because as long as one of them plays, they're all going to play. Now... Once you start playing the disc, you want to make sure that the track advance play works properly. Um, when you advance multiple tracks, it should start playing almost instantly. If there's a hesitation there, um, even for a few seconds, and then it starts playing, then you may have something like a dirty laser or even a degraded laser. And um, those can be, the dirty lasers can be cleaned. You can take something like a Q-tip with isopropyl alcohol, and you can clean that off. But if it's a degraded laser, then the only option would be to replace it. And at that point, you're better off just moving on and trying to find something else. So all this has been checked. This particular uh, five this changer works flawlessly as does the Sony receiver. I'm going to bring you guys to the back for a minute because I want to show you um, some things you want to look at. Now, when you're testing the receivers, especially ones that have all these channels, you need to go ahead and test every single um, channel. In this case, you'd have right now I'm just having them hooked up to uh, speaker A left and right. But later on, after I end this, I'm going to go ahead and move each of these um, speaker wires to systematically down to the uh, second one here. This is speaker B um, for left and right. And then I'll go to the side channels, uh, the rear channels, and then the side channels. Because I want to make sure that all the speaker channels are working properly. And the nice thing about this is you don't need special speakers to test all the channels. I can literally just use these two Sirwin Vega RE16s and I can systematically go through each of the channels. Um, consequently, you want to go ahead and also try all the inputs. So ideally, um, you should have all the different types components, but you probably won't. So you can actually run the CD player 
not only through the CD, but you can run it through the tape input, the multi-channel input. You can run it through the TV satellite, pretty much everything except the uh, phono because that has a preamp built in. So even if you don't have a phonograph to test one of these with, with the CD player, you could pretty much test every other input. And as you can see, this one is pretty nicely featured. When you're at the thrift stores and you're looking for receivers to resell, it's really nice to get ones that have the uh, digital optical and even the coax inputs because a lot of people that have home theater setups now, um, things like their Blu-ray players, their DVD players all have that option. And that does give you a better sound because that's a true digital optical connection. So once again, not 100% necessary, but definitely very, very desirable. So we're going to go ahead and move on here. Let me uh, see if I have any questions or comments from you guys really quick. Brad Smith said, hi, I had cousins who the stereo with a couple of components, but the same ones. Okay, so he was saying his cousin pretty much had the same components. <laughs> you hear Robert Jones like, what happens if you get a copyright strike? Well, hopefully I won't because I only played a few seconds of those. All right, so let's see. We've got 11 watchers and four likes. Go ahead and click that like button if you enjoy this content. That's the only way I can really know if you like what I'm doing or not. Please help me out a little bit. Take a minute while we're taking a break here and go ahead and click that like button. Now, moving on to the cassette deck. Um, there are a couple of ways that you can prepare a cassette deck for resale. This one is a JVC dual cassette deck with auto reverse. Now, I'll show you how the auto reverse works on this. It's actually really cool. Um, you see this little button right here? Well, if you look way down in there, you can see the uh, head right there. I'll go ahead and let my phone focus on it. It's that thing right in the middle there. When I push this button... If I can find it, there we go. Yeah. You see it flip? Well, that's how it auto-reverses. Basically, um, it changes the side of the tape because the, the way a tape records the audio, one side of the tape is side A and the other side is side B. So basically, instead of flipping the tape over, it just flips the head around so it can play side B. Now... The Really, the only maintenance you'll need to do for the most part on a dual cassette deck when you get it is to go ahead and clean those heads. And there is a couple ways to do it. Usually, I like to hit it with something like 91% isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. I'll go ahead and dip the Q-tip in the alcohol and I'll very carefully um, rub on top of the uh, head with the alcohol very carefully because you can damage these if you're not careful. And I'll go ahead and flip it over and I'll wipe the alcohol off the, the few, what the 9% that didn't evaporate. And I did that to start with, but the problem with that is it doesn't actually clean things like the pinch rollers, which are right there or the cap stands. And I could see on here, the cap stands are still a little dirty. So for that, I use something like this. This is a cassette head cleaner. Um, you can get them dry or wet. I do prefer the wet ones because they tend to do a little bit better job. And basically how these work, um, this plays just like a regular cassette, but you add a few drops of this solution here. I love the way it says that. Warning, flammable. Well, I don't plan on putting this near a fire, so I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. So what I will do, and this is not going to be easy, I'm going to try to do this on camera for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and put a few drops of the cleaning solution on here if my camera will focus. There we go. Just a couple of drops is all you need. Go ahead and stick this in the uh, dual cassette deck here, and I'm going to go ahead and click play. Oh, got to... Got to put it in the other opposite side. And there you go. Now, if you were, if, if I was playing this through the receiver, you'd hear kind of a whooshing sound. So right now it's actually cleaning the heads. It, that, that tape is running through the, over the head, 
the uh, the pinch rollers and the cap stands. And I don't know why my phone is doing that. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to let it play to the end. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the auto reverse button for good measure. And I'm going to go ahead and run it in the other direction. You don't necessarily have to do that because really when you play the tape, it's getting both sides. But I figured for good measure, we'll go ahead and do it anyway. And as you can see, the auto reverse has kicked in. So we'll go ahead and let it um, play the other way and clean the heads. I know this part's really boring. You guys really have to uh, use your imagination. Maybe we can sing a song. Should be almost done here. And as soon as it stops, I'm going to hit the stop button. And there you go. And basically, you'll go ahead and do that for both sides. Now, it, the tape is right at the beginning. Wow, you see a little bit of the dirt that picked up right there? Told you, I thought that cap stand was pretty dirty. And later on, I'll go ahead and do that on the other side. But as long as the tapes are playing freely, um, you don't hear any binding or anything, because sometimes... Uh, the Achilles heel of cassette decks are things like the belts. The actual drive belts can dry up and go bad. But as long as it's playing at the right speed and rewind and fast forward are working properly, then generally your belts are fine. And the only maintenance you should really need to do is cleaning the cassette heads. Let's see if we can look in there and see how much cleaner everything is. Oh, yeah. See the cap stands right there? You see the little um, metal-looking things right there? They were really dirty last time, and looks like the uh, head cleaner cleaned those right up. So that is pretty much all you need to do um, when you're testing your stereo components. Now, I am not the end-all, be-all of information when it comes to uh, stereos. I am an audiophile, but... There are other ways of doing things. This is just my preferred method. Um, you guys can hone in. You're welcome to leave a comment down there if you feel that I was incorrect about something. Just please be nice about it. See if we got any other comments here. <laughs> Robert Jones says, uh, hey, Matt, I still have cassette head cleaners, wet and dry. Yeah, the, again, my personal preference is the wet ones. Um, the dry ones do work, and they usually have the added benefit of having a demagnetizer built in. So they will actually also help the your cassette sound better by demagnetizing the heads. So it's really good to have both. Um, unfortunately, at this point, all I have is this wet one, though. I will be perusing eBay in the near future for a, uh, a dry type with a demagnetizer in it. <laughs> Eric Brenner said, kind of lucky that still works. Those flipping heads used to have alignment issues after a few years. Yes, Eric, I am so glad you mentioned that. Um, they did. And I've actually had this model uh, JVC uh, dual cassette before that had those same issues. But in this case, this one actually plays just fine. I am not going to play a tape in here because I think I'm pressing my luck when it comes to the copyright strike. So uh, you guys just have to take my word on that. All right, tubers, I'm going to end this live stream here. I am getting a little bit hoarse. Hope you guys really enjoyed this. Got some information. I like doing these informational live streams for you guys. Please continue to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.